Hey everyone, my name is Tomato Anus, also known as the One Second Wonder, and this is a glitchless speedrun to get married in Stardew Valley. This run is performed by Habu, the current world record holder for this category who also helped me write the script to make sure it's all as accurate as possible. This run was chosen to be featured in the Speedrun Explained series by my patrons, more info at the end of the video how you can help choose speedruns to be covered in future videos. Also, stick around at the end of the video to meet the newest member of the Tomato Anus team. If you're somehow unfamiliar with Stardew Valley, it's a simulation role-playing game where you take over your late grandpa's farm and get it back up in working shape. In the game, you can do things like row crops, craft goods, go mining, fight monsters, and even get married, which is exactly what this speedrun sets out to do. Additionally, your character has both a health and exhaustion level, the latter of which is drained by performing actions. Your exhaustion level is replenished by either collapsing from exhaustion or choosing to go to bed in advance to the next day, which, speaking of, the game has four 28-day months, each representing a different season of the year. With all that being covered, let's get into the run. Yo, what's good? It's your boy, Pastoni Marinara, but you can call me Tony Marinara. We're gonna react to this grilled cheese recipe video. Let's see if it'll get my coveted spicy meatball award. I can tell right away, this dish is not gonna be a spicy meatball. Nuh-uh, this, this is just awful. Not a spicy meatball, one bit. You know what, Freeze? This plate looks like straight buns. Def no spicy meatball. But you know what plate is a spicy meatball? This plate. This plates are one of a kind metal posters with sick designs and over 1.4 million artists. It only takes 20 seconds to set them up and mount them with no power tools. Just slap the magnet on the wall and you're golden. This plate is partnered with tons of big brands for designs like Star Wars, Marvel, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, and more. You can get 27% off if you purchase one to two disc plates or 37% off if you purchase three or more disc plates using the link in the description. Anytime after that, 15% off. Now that's a spicy meatball. When setting up the game file, there are several settings Habu chooses that matter for the run. First, Habu sets the farm map type to the forest farm. Throughout the run, we're going to be doing a fair amount of foraging to get things we can craft into seeds that we then sell. We can get extra forage from the forest farm as opposed to the other farm maps, meaning we get more seeds and therefore more money. Next, we play as a female in the run, but not because our gender plays a factor into who we can marry. Love is universal after all. The reason why we play as female actually has to do with our parents. In Stardew Valley, when you pass four specific milestones for how much gold you've earned overall, you'll get letters in the mail from one of your parents, along with a gift in most cases. The four milestones are when you've earned 5,000 gold, 15,000 gold, 32,000 gold, and 120,000 gold. In this run, we'll pass the first two milestones, meaning we'll get two letters and gifts from our parents. When you play as a male, you get gifts from your mom, with the first gift being a cookie and the second gift being 500 gold. When you play as a female, you get gifts from your dad, with both the first and second gifts being 500 gold, totaling to 1,000 gold, and meaning that we get 500 gold extra this run for playing as a female. Thirdly, Habu sets the number of starting cabins to two, with the spread layout. This gives us a second cabin that can be relocated to the southernmost part of the farm near to where our future hubby lives. This saves time by being able to stay at the southern cabin by our future spouse, as opposed to walking all the way up to the main cabin to sleep. And lastly, we set our animal preference to the cat. In Stardew, the dog's bark is 188 frames longer than the cat's meow, meaning we save 3.13 seconds by setting our preference to the cat. Those are all the settings that matter for the run here, so let's actually get going now. So right when we wake up and begin the speedrun and day one of our file, Habu immediately grabs a present left to us by Mayor Lewis containing 15 parsnip seeds. Habu then immediately heads outside and clears out space to plant all of our parsnip seeds and elects to water one of the planted seeds before heading back inside to take a casual nap that lasts until day 19. Parsnip seeds need to be watered four times to grow into a parsnip, but rain, you know, it exists and does our watering for us. It always rains on day three at the start of the game, so that's one guaranteed watering of our plants, and then after day four, there's an 18.3% chance for it to rain on any given day in the spring and fall. This means that the odds of it raining at least two additional times to have our one parsnip grow are really good, while the odds of it raining three additional times to have all the parsnips grow, while not as good, are still pretty reasonable. While we sleep for a bit, let's quickly go over how we become friends with someone and get married. The friendship and relationship system in Stardew Valley is both super simple and complicated at the same time. Every villager has a bar of 10 hearts. The more you engage with villagers in certain ways, the heart bar will fill up. Once you get the heart bar maxed out at 10 hearts with one of the villagers who's single, you can wed them. 
Each heart in the bar represents friendship points, 250 of them to be exact. When you increase friendship points with a villager by a multiple of 250, then you gain another heart. You earn friendship points by doing things like talking to a villager, giving them a gift, completing quests for them, and other little things like buying them a snack at the movie theater. Friendship points don't just go up though, they can go down too. Points decay over time by not talking to a villager, or more directly, you can lose points by doing things like hitting them with a slingshot, or rummaging through a garbage can when a villager is nearby. The Stardew speedrunning community has routed out the friendship points for this run super exactly, accounting for things like decay on days when we don't talk to our future hubby, and also the fact we gift him an item on his birthday. There are a couple more intricacies and steps to the marriage process, but rather than cover them now, we'll talk about them when we get to them in the run. I'm going to keep track of our friendship points throughout the run as we take certain actions, and they'll be displayed on screen for you to follow along. Remember that our goal is 10 hearts, which is equal to at least 2,500 points. So day 19 is a pretty big day for this speedrun for something called the Billboard YOLO, which I'll explain in a second, but first let's talk about what Habu is doing now. So the person that we're going to marry is Shane, who as I mentioned earlier lives just south of the farm. Shane leaves his ranch at 7.10am. We have to wait until that time, and this is a common occurrence in the run, having to wait. Luckily for the most part, we usually have something to do in the meantime. Right now Habu is chopping down trees to make progress on the goal of having 750 wood in our inventory. One of the requirements to get married in this game is to upgrade our farmhouse at least once, which costs 10,000 gold and 450 wood. Additionally, to get married, we have to get an item called the Mermaid's Pendant, which requires us to build a bridge costing 300 wood, bringing us to why we need to get 750 wood total. Here, Habu chopped down exactly 8 trees and removed 4 tree stumps, bringing us to 100 XP total for foraging. This brings us to level 1 for foraging, which is super important, but I'll get into it on another day. Now that Shane has left his house and is making his way to work, Habu interrupts him by gifting a parsnip. Habu then makes a point out of talking to Shane an additional time after gifting the parsnip. This is because you get friendship points for the first time you talk to a villager each day, but the dialogue from the parsnip gift doesn't count. From these interactions with Shane, we get 45 points from the parsnip gift and 20 points from talking to him, bringing us to 65 points earned today and 65 points total. In town, Habu just checked the billboard and got a quest for Shane that requires us to bring him a Joja Cola. Now, I don't like the idea of doing this, but I'm going to pause the run right here to explain the significance of this quest spawning. I find the appeal of these speedrun explained videos to be in part that the run is explained in real time as it happens, and often it makes for a really tough challenge to get the explanations to fit just right as the actions and results are appearing on screen. This is the first time though that I think it's necessary to straight up just pause the run for a bit to explain something. It's far too fascinating to not talk about and provides a lot of insight as to why speedruns of Stardew Valley and especially the marriage category are so interesting. There's a lot of info here, just hang with me for a second. So day 19 as we just experienced it is about 3 minutes into the run and is a big reset point because of the aforementioned billboard YOLO. By billboard, we're referring to the bulletin board outside of Pierre's general store, which is where quests are posted and where we got the quest to bring a Joja Cola to Shane. The way it's determined what kind of quest spawns on any given day is a bit complicated. In short, on file creation, a decimal value is rolled between 0 and 1. This value will fall in one of four ranges of values. Each range of values is assigned a type of quest, and whichever range the rolled value falls within is the type of quest that spawns on day one. The four types of quests that can spawn are a resource collection quest, which requires you to gather things like wood or stone, a fishing quest, an item delivery quest where you have to bring a specific item to an NPC, or no quest at all. These options all have different probabilities of occurring based on the ranges of values that turn up each of these as a result. This is only for day 1 though. For each subsequent day, the value 0.522425342 is added to the original roll number and whatever number that ends up being dictates what type of quest spawns on that day. In all though, that addition process will always be adding the same total amount to the original value by the time we get to day 19, so the probabilities here are the same as they are for day 19 as to what will spawn, meaning there's a 40% chance that we get an item delivery quest on day 19, which is what we need to continue the run. Even if we get lucky though and get an item delivery quest to spawn, we're not out of the woods yet. That's because you have to account for whether or not the quest that spawns requests an item that's actually reasonable to get in the speedrun and not something that would take forever to get. 
In total, there's an 87% chance that the run will die based on either not getting an item delivery quest or getting a quest that would take too long. That's right, only 13% of runs that make it to the billboard actually continue. This run is one of the lucky few with the quest item being a Joja Cola. The reason why getting a good quest to spawn is important is because turning in a quest to a villager gives 150 friendship points to our relationship. This is more points than giving a villager a gift that they love, meaning that if we turn in a quest for them, we can cut out at least one day where we would have to give them a gift, saving about 30 to 40 seconds in the process. This is the only quest we do in the speedrun, and some of you may be asking why we don't do more quests if they provide more points than giving gifts. There are a couple reasons for that. First is that when you get a quest, the quest will be for one of any of the villagers you've met up to that point. On day 19 when we check the billboard, we've only met Shane, meaning that if an item delivery quest does spawn, it'll for sure be for Shane. As the run goes on, we're forced to meet more villagers, which adds more villagers to the pool of who the quest can be for, meaning our odds of getting a quest that is actually for Shane decrease, making it less worth to go for quests later in the run. There's also a bit more to this, like Habu doesn't open his inventory at all until after he gets the Shane quest from the billboard. The reason for this is pretty interesting. In the intro of the game, you meet Robin and Lewis. You're able to check a box to skip the intro, as we did in our file creation, but the game still counts Robin and Lewis as having been met. However, the game doesn't actually register them as met until you open up your inventory for the first time, so if Habu opened his inventory before going to the billboard, Robin and Lewis would be added to the pool of potential quest villagers. Because Habu avoids this until after getting the quest though, the game considers them as having not been met yet, and the quest, should it spawn, will always be Shane. That is, if it's an item delivery quest, which again, there's only a 40% chance of it being. If we get unlucky and it ends up being a fishing quest or a resource collection quest, then the quest will be for Willy or Clint, even though we haven't met them yet. If you end up getting either a fishing or resource collection quest, then the run is dead. In all, the risk reward just isn't worth it to do more quests with how optimized the speedrun currently is. Okay, I think that should cover it. Sorry that I had to pause the run to cover all that, but I just felt it was necessary to include, and there's no way I could have crammed 4 minutes of info into 40 seconds. I promise there won't be any additional interruptions for the rest of the run. With our quest all set up, Habu makes his way back to our farm so we can go to bed in advance to the next day, day 20, which is actually Shane's birthday. This is the reason why we slept to day 19 specifically, so that we can gift Shane an object on his birthday for a huge friendship point bonus and also turn in a quest at the same time. While we sleep to day 20, we hit foraging level 1 since we hit 100 XP in foraging like I mentioned earlier, which unlocks the spring seeds recipe which I'll explain in a moment. First though, when we exit our house, Marnie is waiting for us with a cat. This is where setting our animal preference to cat comes into play, saving the 188 frames I mentioned earlier. We say no to keeping the cat though since that saves time, but also because we're speedrunners and we'll always turn down pussy in the name of speed. After talking to Marnie, Habu builds a chest real quick and after picking all but one of the parsnips, Habu stores any items in the chest that we don't need at this moment before picking up the last parsnip and setting off for a pretty busy day. Just east of our farm is a bus stop where Habu is going to walk through to collect any spring forage, which consists of wild horseradish, daffodil, leek, or dandelions. It's super important that we find at least four of each of these throughout the run, as having one of each is required to craft the spring seeds recipe we just unlocked, and we want to craft four spring seeds packets in total. The reason why crafting spring seeds is so important is that they sell for a decent amount of gold, which we're going to need later in the run, so you'll see Habu often running around foraging these items for this reason. Habu's now back at the farm clearing out some weeds to collect mixed seeds since we have a lot of time to kill since Shane comes outside at noon on Saturdays as opposed to 7.10. Mixed seeds are important, and we collected a few of them on day 19 as well, but we'll get into the importance of them later. Something worth mentioning is that at the start of this day, we don't want it to be raining. That's because if it was raining, Shane would default back to his working schedule where he leaves his house at 7.10 and be at the Joja Mart pretty early in the day. That means we would have to walk all the way to the Joja Mart to complete his quests, and the Joja Mart is pretty far away, losing us about 5 seconds overall. So something Habu just did was clear out the land at the far south of the farm. As I mentioned during file creation, we chose to have two cabins, and we want our second cabin to be as far south as possible. Habu prepped the area that the cabin will be moved to later, so we can save time walking to and from Shane. The shortened walking distance saves about 5 seconds each time compared to walking all the way up to the farmhouse, but overall throughout the run it only saves around 10 seconds due to losing time to an extra menu. 
After clearing out the south, Habu walked to the west area of the farm, which in the forest layout is the main foraging area, and was able to grab a couple more items that will go into our spring seeds, as well as a few morels, which don't go into our seeds, but sell for 150 gold each, so they're super valuable to grab. So, Habu is currently just looking to kill time. We have to wait until noon for the saloon to open, which is where we're going to both buy Shane as Joja Cola for the quest, along with three beers to give to him throughout the run. To kill time, Habu is going to eventually venture to the north side of the map looking for more forage to craft into seeds, which ideally we want to have four of each item, letting us craft four times to get a total of 40 seed packets. Something else that Habu is doing is purposely draining his energy, which you can see diminish in the bottom right corner. When you run out of energy, you collapse where you're standing, lose 10% of your current gold, and wake up the next morning in your farmhouse or cabin. This is way faster than running back to the farm in most cases, and is what we're going to be doing today. The downside to this though is the fact that we lose gold, which is why Habu is sure to not sell too much of the items he's collected at any one time. That way he doesn't have extra gold on his person that will be lost when we collapse from exhaustion. We're a little unlucky with having to buy the Joja Cola this run because normally selling 20 seed packets gives us the exact amount of gold needed to buy 3 beers so we don't have any leftover gold that we lose when we collapse. For the Joja Cola though, we need an additional 75 gold, which is a bit of an awkward number that requires us to have a bit of extra gold, causing us to lose a little bit when we collapse. We're nearing the end of Habu's foraging run, which unfortunately didn't yield much in terms of things that spawned. That's okay though, because we still have time later to look for more forage to be able to craft the needed amount of seeds. We now make our way to the carpenter shop, where we'll speak with Robin and choose to move existing buildings at our farm. This is where we choose to move the cabin on our farm from the already southern location it's at to the far south area that we cleared out. Here Habu is able to pan the camera quickly while on the moving screen by holding down both A and S while having the mouse at the bottom corner. After leaving the carpenter, we still have a bit of time to kill before the clock strikes noon and we have to be at the saloon, so Habu moseys about a bit more, looking specifically for at least one daffodil. As I said earlier, we need to craft spring seeds at least twice to get 20 seed packets in order to have enough gold to buy 3 beers for Shane, but we're one daffodil short. Thankfully, in Pelican Town proper, daffodils are the only forageable items that are found on the ground in spring, so finding at least one shouldn't be too hard, which proves to be true as Habu found one right now over by this fountain. Habu then crafted and threw the seed packs on the ground out of his inventory before picking them up and continuing the move. The reason for this is that as long as you're in the inventory menu, the in-game clock is not moving, and we want it to hit noon as soon as possible, and dropping them is quicker than dragging them into your inventory. In Pierre's general store, we immediately pay respects to skip the cutscene, then speak with the head honcho himself to sell the seeds we synthesized, moreover, market the morels to make money for the mixer. This brings us to 1,350 gold, 1,200 of which will be going into buying the 3 beers, leaving 150 extra to purchase the 75 gold Joja Cola. After checking nearby trash cans for items he can sell, Habu storms the saloon as it opens as if it were Black Friday, only to immediately run to the right to purchase a Joja Cola and wait for Gus the barkeep. If he doesn't have to buy the Joja Cola, Habu would normally run up in front of Gus in the hallway and stand there for a second. This irritates Gus and causes him to run to get to his position in time, which saves a small amount of time. Once Gus finally arrives, Habu holds shift while buying the beer, which normally is a hotkey for buying 5 items at a time, but since we only have enough gold for 3 beers, it purchases 3 instead. Habu then runs across town while holding a beer the size of his body over his head, miraculously not spilling a single drop. We then just so happened to run into our future husband, what a coincidence we totally weren't keeping track of his schedule. Habu gives Shane the beer, which is a gift he loves, meaning it nets us 80 friendship points, but because it's his birthday, there's an 8 times multiplier on it, so it actually nets us 640 friendship points. Habu also gave Shane the Joja Cola to turn in the quest, netting us 150 points, then Habu talked to Shane for the 20 extra points. We then swung our axe a couple times to completely overexert ourselves and pass out on the spot, rounding off what would be a great story to tell our future grandkids about the second time we ever met, and what probably counts as our first date. We then slept until day 23, which causes our friendship points with Shane to decay by a total of 4, since at this stage in our relationship, our points decay at a rate of 2 for each day that we don't speak to him. You may be wondering why we aren't going and gifting something to Shane every day, and the reason for that is that you can only gift something to a villager twice a week, with Sunday being the start of a new week. For this part, our next big day is day 24, but we can give Shane one other time this week, so we choose to do so on day 23 just for convenience. 
Day 23 mostly consists of Habu clearing out a couple trees before going down and gifting Shane a three-day-old beer at 7.10 in the morning. Shane will absolutely love this gift, giving us 80 friendship points in addition to the 20 points we get for talking to him, meaning we get 100 friendship points from this day, bringing us to 981 points total. To end day 23, we're gonna sleep in the southern cabin that we relocated earlier in the run, which will bring us to day 24, which is when the second available festival in the game takes place, the Flower Dance. The Flower Dance takes place in the area of the map that Shane lives in, which means that it's normally barred from player access until the festival actually begins at 9am. However, if you're able to enter the area before 6-10am, which we can do since we sleep so close to it, then we're allowed to enter the area and hang out there. We choose to actually be up and moving on this day because at the flower dance, you're able to dance with any villagers you have at least 4 friendship hearts with to gain an additional 250 friendship points, making for easy points that we can't say no to. We only have 981 friendship points so far though, which is under the 1000 friendship points that go into having 4 friendship hearts that would allow for us to dance with Shane. Luckily, because we're in Shane's area and not barred from it due to the dance being set up, once the clock hits 7.10, then we can gift him another stale beer and talk to him again to gain another 100 points to bring us to 1,081 total before the dance, meaning we can dance with him when the dance actually starts. While we wait for the clock to strike 7.10, Habu spends the time collecting some more wood and foraging a little bit. After gifting the beer, Habu will plant a bunch of pine cones and maple seeds that he's collected which will take 18 days on average to grow to maturity. That way, if later in the speedrun he runs out of trees on the farm and needs more, he'll have these here as a backup. Back at the farm, Habu will clear out a bit more space by the cabin which will be used as a farm, and he'll also mine some rocks to get at least one coal that he'll use when crafting a scarecrow. Crows spawn when you have at least 16 crops on the farm, and we're going to be having 50 soon, so having a scarecrow is a must. Habu then kills the rest of the time before the dance at 9 by foraging a bit and using any extra energy he has to collect wood and mixed seeds. We have a moment so, as always, I'd just like to take a second to remind you that no feeling is final. If you're familiar with the channel, you already knew that this was coming, but I just want you to remember that no matter how bad things may seem in the moment, those feelings don't define you or the rest of your life. How you feel right now is not conclusive or definite, and things will get better. There are better days ahead even if it doesn't feel like it. You're far stronger than you think you are or give yourself credit for. And that's something that's important, giving yourself credit. Don't be ashamed of taking credit for wins with your mental health. While things like movies or music or YouTube videos explaining speedruns might serve as a good distraction from what you have going on, you're the one who actually is bettering yourself, even if it doesn't seem like it. So if you ever feel like a piece of media saved you, know that it was actually you who saved yourself. Back to the run, as the clock strikes 9, we enter the festival area. We'll walk along the cliffside and then the shoreline, and we'll then arrive at the flower dance proper, where we'll speak with Shane a few times to be able to ask him to dance, which he'll accept since we have four hearts of friendship with him. Shane accepting to dance with us gives us an additional 250 points with him, bringing us to 1,331 friendship points total. Habu then speaks to Mayor Lewis to begin the dance, which leads to quite a salacious cutscene. Habu's split name for the dance is actually called Booty for Jody, seeing as rather than joining in with the hip swinging dress dance that all the other females perform, we instead just twerk right in front of Jody. Which, whatever, I'm fine with it, as long as no one shows up with a bear or a maypole. After the dance ends, we spawn back at the farmhouse at 10pm where Habu is going to sleep until the first day of summer. We already have all the forage we need from spring and have set ourselves up in a good place going forward, and we've also already gifted Shane twice this week, so we can't give him anything else until this week ends and summer begins. We're going to sleep as soon as we wake up four times in a row, meaning that's four days where we don't speak to Shane, meaning that we decay two points from our friendship points with him four times, bringing us down eight points. However, if you gift someone twice in one week, then you get a bonus 10 points added to your relationship when you wake up on Sunday morning. This brings us to 1,333 total by the time we wake up on Monday, the first of summer. Summer is the big month for gifting Shane and earning money. 
Right away, Habu interacted with the chest and emptied out some of his inventory, then grabbed the stored hoe, watering can, wood, sap, coal, and mixed seeds. He then crafted a scarecrow along with 50 fertilizer since we're going to be planting 50 crops. At the bottom of the farm by our cabin, Habu prepares a plot of land in a very specific shape so that he can be more efficient with his movement and refill his watering can when he's by the little pond and also leaves a little strip empty on the bottom of the plot. This empty strip is because you walk slightly slower when walking over grown crops, so this way he has a little empty runway for him to Naruto run in when he needs to get to the cabin. After propping up the scarecrow, watering the ground, and laying out the fertilizer, Habu then plants mixed seeds all throughout the plot, keeping track in his head of how many of the planted seeds are peppers. This is why we were collecting all the mixed seeds earlier, because we use them to try and get free peppers when we start off our pepper farm. You can tell which is which by the sprite that spawns, with pepper seeds being the one that's the three large dark seeds that form a triangle. We need to fill the plot with 50 total pepper seeds, and in this run we get 10 planted peppers from the mix seeds, meaning we only need to buy 40 pepper seeds from the store. After getting everything set with this plot of land and all the seeds that aren't pepper seeds cleared out, Habu will do some quick inventory management to have a bunch of items he's going to sell to Pierre to be able to buy the pepper seeds. This, of course, after clearing out some tall grass in the way so we can walk across the farm faster in the future. After the inventory management, we'll make our way across town, stopping to pick up some definitely fresh grapes that are laying at the bus stop that fell out of someone's lunchbox that we'll also sell. In town, we're going to be running into Shane on his way to work and we'll speak to him for our daily 20 points in addition to gifting him a silver quality parsnip which gives 45 points plus a 10% bonus for being silver quality. The game rounds up for most values but not for friendship points so we'll get 49 points from the parsnip gift instead of 50. This altogether rounds out to 69 points added to our total which will bring our total to 1,402 points. Habu now goes into Pierre's and sells all our excess items, giving us just barely enough to purchase 40 pepper seeds. We'll now head back to the farm and plant all our seeds, then sleep until the following week since we don't have anything else to gift Shane. Our peppers won't grow in time to gift this week, and there's no way to be able to afford an additional beer without going way out of our way and losing time, and we already sold all our other parsnips to afford the three beers we gave Shane earlier. While this all plays out, I want to go over something crucial to the run. While it may seem like this speedrun is largely just following the route to get married and thinking on your feet with what the game gives you, there's still a bit of tech involved that relies on execution to save time. The main piece of tech is something called animation cancelling. Animation cancelling is a debug tool left in the game by the developer, and the Stardew Valley speedrunning community finds it to be a super interesting piece of tech so they allow it in glitchless runs. If you're playing on PC and press R, right shift, and delete after a tool input, you can cancel most tool animations. That might sound like an awkward combination of buttons to press repeatedly, which is why Habu has R rebound to his spacebar and both right shift and delete bound to buttons on his mouse. That way he can just hold the buttons on his mouse down with his thumb and press space whenever he needs to cancel. It's hard to quantify exactly how much time animation cancelling saves overall, but performing an action with animation cancelling is about three times faster than performing it normally. Additionally, the amount of time save is different with each tool. Some tools have faster animation cancels than others, with the water can being the fastest, followed by the scythe, then the hoe, and the pickaxe and axe being tied for last. And on top of that, the amount of time save is different based on what direction you're facing, with facing to the right being fastest, followed by facing left, then up, and then down. The time difference between facing the different directions is only a few frames, so while not monumental, it's still noticeable. So you may have noticed a few moments ago that on day 4 of summer, Habu grabbed a second watering can from the dresser in the cabin. I didn't point it out when it was happening because I was busy blabbering about animation cancelling, but this watering can holds more significance than you'd think. Habu performs this run on version 1.4, as opposed to the more current 1.5 patch. This is because in the 1.4 version, that second watering can spawns in the cabin, letting us water 80 total tiles before having to refill, as opposed to the measly 40 tiles we're able to water with just one can. 
This watering can was removed in the 1.5 patch. There is an upside to 1.5 though in that we can move the bed around in the main farmhouse. This would let us move the bed next to the door to save walking time whenever we're going to the bed in the farmhouse, but overall it's more beneficial to have the second watering can as opposed to being able to move the bed. In total, having the second watering can is a little under 15 seconds faster than being able to move the bed in the farmhouse, so while it's not the end of the world if you play on 1.5 instead, it's sizable enough that playing on 1.4 is preferred. Back to the run, I fast forwarded day 6 a bit since it was just watering, but here we are on Monday, the 8th day of summer, which is our first harvest day with the peppers. We're going to be gifting Shane a pepper on this day, and picking and watering all the pepper plants won't take all morning, so Habu will pass some extra time by chopping down some trees to get more wood, working our way to that goal of 750. In the inventory, you'll notice that we have several different qualities of peppers, and we're going to be gifting Shane a gold pepper every time for the multiplier bonus it gives us, which is an extra 25%. Because the pepper is a gift Shane loves, we get 80 points for it, plus 25% for it being gold quality, making it actually 100 points, and then we get an extra 20 points from talking to Shane, netting us 120 points in total for the day. This 120 point gifting and talking combo brings us from 1,402 points to 1,522 points. But we also didn't talk to Shane for 6 days, meaning we lost 12 points due to decay, bringing our current total to 1,510 points. We gift the pepper to Shane in the most romantic way possible, by holding a ginormous pepper above our head like we're John Cusack with a boombox, and giving this Shrek dong of a pepper to our lover at 7 in the morning. Habu then heads back to the cabin and begins to sleep for a couple days. So optimally we want to make sure that it's sunny on days where we go outside and gift Shane because that means we can also water our plants then. This may seem counterintuitive to some of you because you may be thinking wouldn't you want it to be raining on a day where you give a gift because that means you save time by not having to water? The answer to that is actually no because you have to keep in mind that we have to wait until 7:10 regardless so it's worth it to be able to water. This is why here Habu sleeps until day 11 of summer, because it's a festival day in town which guarantees that it will be sunny outside, meaning it's a good time for us to water our peppers. We just went two days without speaking to Shane, so our friendship points with him have dropped to 1506, but we're going to be gifting him another gold tier pepper after we're done watering, which will bring our points up to 1626. So let's talk a bit more about when Habu chooses to go outside and water the peppers, and what the reasoning is behind it. In total, we need to complete 5 pepper harvests to get enough money for the rest of the run. In all, we need 15,200 gold, 200 for the bouquet to indicate romantic interest, 5,000 for the mermaid's pendant which is used to propose marriage, and 10,000 for the house upgrade that's required to get married. There are 28 days in the month and as I just said, we need to have 5 harvests to get that 15,200 gold. Peppers need to be watered a total of 5 times to grow for the first time and 3 times after being harvested to grow more peppers. This means that the first of our 5 harvests require us to water for 5 days and the following 4 harvests require us to water for 3 days each, meaning in total, our peppers need to be watered on 17 days of the month, which means that we can skip going outside on 11 days of the month. However, we still need to harvest on that last day of the month, even though we aren't watering, so we can actually only skip 10 days of the month with our goal being to have 5 harvests total. The chance of rain on any given day in summer is 12.6% plus 0.3% for every day that has passed in the month. This means that as the month goes on, the chance that rain will occur increases with day 13 and day 26 always having rain. If it's raining outside, we don't have to go out and water, meaning that as the month goes on, we're more and more likely to get a free day that we don't need to go outside. On average, you should get around 5 rain days through all of summer, counting the 2 guaranteed rain days. Rain is pretty busted as well. If it rains on a day where we'd be going outside to water but not harvest, it saves around 20 to 25 seconds since we don't have to go outside at all. It's the combination of all these facts that Habu weighs in his mind when deciding to go outside how many times he's skipped, how likely it is to rain on the remaining days, and whether or not he's gone outside twice that week to give gifts to Shane, because you have to remember that we have to do that as well, and any time we go out to gift Shane, we're going to water our plants to take advantage of the time we're waiting for Shane to come outside. Something else worth mentioning is that doing 5 harvests will give us just enough farming XP to get us to level 5 in the farming skill. This is perfect because at level 5 in farming we get the tiller perk, which lets us sell our crops for 10% more, which is awesome since we're going to be selling so many peppers that Pierre won't know what to do with himself. 
So catching back up to the run, Habu has been repeating this process of watering, harvesting, and gifting to Shane, and it's now day 22. Our current point total is Shane is 1870, meaning we're getting pretty close to the end game of the run. We have two harvests remaining and have already watered once for the first of those two. That means that including today, we need to water five times to accomplish our harvests. We're guaranteed rain on the 26th, so that's one of our remaining five times taken care of. We also still have two days left where we have to gift Shane, meaning that we have two days where we're guaranteed to water. That means that we have two watering days remaining that need to be filled that aren't accounted for. The game plan from here on out for summer is water and gift today and tomorrow, harvest and water on the 24th, stay in bed on the 25th and hope for rain, stay in bed on the 26th because it'll for sure rain, water on the 27th, which finishes off all our watering unless it rained on the 25th, in which case it's already done, then harvest on the 28th. Spoiler alert though, we don't get any rain in these final days other than on the 26th. By the way, when Habu goes to give a gift to Shane here, he chopped down some of the trees we planted earlier. Habu has massacred pretty much every tree near the cabin, so to chop wood, he'd have to go to the north side of the farm and risk being late to Shane. Instead, we can reap the rewards of our hard work earlier and chop down the trees we planted by Shane's to help with the push to 750 wood. So, I probably should have talked about this earlier, but some of you may be asking, why Shane? That's super easy to answer because there's so many reasons other than the fact that he's a cutie. Shane has the best gifts that he loves, beer and peppers. Beer you can easily buy and peppers are simple to grow. Shane also is the fastest villager out of their house. The closest to his time is a villager that comes out at around 8am, but every 10 minutes in-game is 7 seconds in real life, so they're 28 seconds slower to come outside each day. Shane also has an early birthday, so we can get our friendship points with him high enough early on to go to the flower dance with him. And lastly, he's close by, making for quick trips to give gifts. So, day 23 is the last day in summer that we give a gift to Shane, and it'll bring our friendship points with him to a whopping total of 2,110 points. This will put us over the threshold for 8 hearts, which changes how friendship points work with him. Once you get a villager to 8 hearts, their decay stops. If we don't talk to Shane each day, our points with him won't go down from 2,110 points. This is a double-edged sword though, because our meter can't go above 8 hearts now either. If we keep giving him gifts, it'll cap out at 2,249 points, one shy of giving us 9 hearts. We're stuck in this limbo until we purchase a bouquet for 200 gold from Pierre's store and give it to Shane, at which point we'll be able to gain points again and get to the 10 hearts required to get married. Once we give him the bouquet though, then the decay will start up again, but this time at a rate of 10 points a day instead of the 2 points from before. This isn't a big issue in the speedrun though, but you'll see why pretty soon. Back to what's going on at this moment, after finishing up the final harvest, we'll have gotten enough farming XP for the tiller perk that I mentioned earlier, which Habu will take when he goes to sleep at the end of day 28. The perk pops up on the right side of the screen for us to select, and Habu knows this and hovers his mouse over the right side of the screen and spam clicks to instantly select it in a way that we barely get to see it. So, this brings us to fall and we're going to right away sleep until day 5. This is because every night, there's a roll for our mail. The roll is between every villager we know, and in this run we know 4, Marnie, Shane, Robin, and Lewis. After the roll to select a villager you know, there's then an additional roll to see if they send you a gift, with the odds being based on the amount of friendship hearts you have with them. Since we only have met 4 villagers, that means there's a 25% chance each night for Shane to be chosen to give us something in the mail. Then, because we have 8 friendship hearts with him, there's an 80% chance that he'll include a gift in his mail to us. By sleeping until day 5, it increases our odds of Shane having sent us mail. Shane can send us either pizza or pepper poppers. Pizza sells for 300 gold, which is nice to have so that we can sell it when we go to Pierre shortly, and Pepper Poppers give us a plus one move speed buff, which is handy since we're going to be running long distances soon. After taking out a few more trees to try and get to the 750 wood goal, Habu is going to check the mail, which flashing lights warning for a couple seconds. If you're sensitive to flashing lights, close your eyes, I'll say when to reopen them. Habu spams to open all the mail that we've gotten so far in the run, which includes 3 pizzas and 4 pepper poppers, all of which are definitely still fresh. Okay, now you can open your eyes again. 
Habu pops a pepper popper and after clearing out a couple more trees, we'll start heading to town, swinging by the bus stop along the way to forge a couple additional things to sell. Our goal is to intercept Shane in front of Pierre's at around 8.30 a.m. There, we'll give him another gold tier pepper to increase our friendship points with him from 2,110 to 2,230. Also though, we have to factor in that at the end of summer we gave him two gifts in one week, meaning we got another 10 friendship points added, so we're actually at 2,240, just below the maximum we can go without giving him a bouquet. After we give Shane the pepper, we're going to continually run into the door to Pierre's like a zombie as we wait for it to open at 9. Once we're inside, we're going to sell everything we can in our inventory except two pepper poppers and two gold quality hot peppers since we're going to be going out two more days to gift Shane, so we need the poppers to run fast and the peppers to give to our beau. While we're at Pierre's, we also buy our bouquet that we're going to give to Shane. When we exit Pierre's, we're going to begin heading to the carpenter shop to upgrade our house which again is a requirement to get married and costs 10,000 gold and 450 wood. We're a little short on gold right now with us needing 15,000 for both the house and the mermaid's pendant, so Habu opens up our quest journal and claims the reward to three quests we've inadvertently completed throughout the run, bringing us to 14,046 gold. This is enough since we know that we have 1,000 gold waiting for us in the mail now from our dad, as we discussed before starting the run. After Habu makes it to the carpenter shop and upgrades the house, he'll make his way back to the farmhouse to sleep and that's when things will get a bit interesting. First off, Habu is going to need to be checking the TV every day for reasons I'll explain in a moment. Normally, when the house expands from our upgrade though, the TV will get moved far away, but by instead picking up the TV to move it and bringing it in bed with us, then when we wake up, we'll still be holding it and able to place it right next to our bed. This makes both checking it every day really easy and also some extracurriculars at night really easy as well. So the reason why we're going to be checking the TV every day is because we're checking to see if the next day is raining. This is because we can only purchase the mermaid's pendant from the old mariner and the old mariner only spawns on days when it's raining. We still have to gift Shane twice more to get him to 10 hearts though and our next gift will only be effective if we give him the bouquet. Remember though that the bouquet triggers an insane decay rate and our friendship points this run are going to be just barely scraping past the 2500 point requirement. So if we have even one day of decay due to not talking to Shane after giving him the bouquet, then we'll drop below 2500 points and have to give another gift. This is why we check the TV every day to see if it'll rain tomorrow because once we see that it will rain tomorrow, we head out to gift chain the bouquet and the penultimate pepper, setting ourselves up for the final day where we'll give him the final pepper and talk to him one final time, pushing us over 2500 points, allowing us to then give him the mermaid's pendant and end the run. This is where a lot of luck comes into play and unfortunately it's at the end of the run. If you want to get world record with this route, then ideally you'll get rain on the second or third time you check the TV. We're a bit more unlucky this run. Also, you may have noticed Habu sleeping for two days right here without checking the TV. This is because we can't easily gift to Shane on Saturdays or Sundays. If we check the TV on Saturday and it said rain the next day, while it may be easy to gift a pepper to Shane on Sunday then because he always goes to work at 7.10 if it's raining regardless of day, we'd still have to wait until 9am to gift him on that Saturday when we check the TV. Similarly, if we check the TV on Sunday and it said it was raining the next day, then it wouldn't work because Shane doesn't leave his house at all on Sundays, so we wouldn't be able to gift him the bouquet and set up for the final day. We finally got an upcoming rain when we checked the TV today on Wednesday the 17th, so we set out for our last moments as a bachelorette. Right away, we popped a pepper popper and checked our mail to get our money from daddy and now head south to Shane's. There we'll chop down some trees while waiting to get the remaining wood we need since we need 300 total. Nothing says romance quite like chopping wood outside your lover's house at 6.30am waiting for them to wake up so you can give them a pepper. After chopping down a couple trees, we'll then stand outside the door waiting to ambush Shane and bash him in the head with the bouquet. Habu gifts the bouquet first because it'll remove the cap on points and if we were to talk to Shane first or give him the pepper first then it'd be a waste since we'd be hitting the point cap of 2249 and making us have to give another gift and waste a day. Giving Shane the bouquet it both uncaps our points and also nets us 25 additional points. After then talking to Shane and gifting him the pepper, we'll have netted a total of 145 points today, bringing us to 2,385 points overall. This wraps up our single life as we're technically now in a relationship with Shane. Took us a while for us to make it FBO, huh?
When we get back to our cabin to sleep until tomorrow, we take the Michael Scott approach of wanting to have food ready for us when we wake up, but do it in an arguably safer way by just holding a plate of pepper poppers above our head all night. After waking up and devouring the poppers, we head outside and begin our massive sprint across the map. This is actually the biggest day to have a pepper popper because of how much running we're going to be doing. We're first going to go to the beach and repair the bridge since we have some time to kill before Shank comes outside, but making it to the bridge and back before Shank comes outside is only doable if you've eaten a pepper popper, otherwise you move too slow. When Habu makes it to the beach and activates the bridge repair, he's going to make sure to stand in a specific spot. This is because during the repair cutscene, he's going to hold A and W to move to the left and up. For some reason, if you hold down a directional button while you're repairing something or during a cutscene, your character will move during the cutscene. That's why he stands as far south as possible, to make sure he doesn't bump into any of the buildings on the beach while moving during the cutscene. This strat combined with the use of pepper poppers is what makes it possible to repair the bridge and make it back to Shane all before he comes outside, as Habu does here. Once Shane eventually comes out, we'll give him the final pepper of the run and speak to him one more time, giving us an additional 120 points, bringing us to 2,505 points and 10 friendship hearts total. The reason why we ran back to gift Shane instead of going to the old mariner to purchase the pendant right away is that you can only purchase the pendant after having reached a 10 heart friendship with someone, in addition to the prerequisites of having given them a bouquet and purchased the first farmhouse upgrade. When we arrive at the beach, we're going to run across the bridge we just built to find the old mariner and purchase the pendant, then run back across town into Shane again as he's on his way to work. I swear, Pelican Town is so weird with all their oddball traditions like having to buy a shell on a string from an old creepy dude who only appears on a specific beach in the rain. Needless to say that until now that beach was inaccessible, but my money is on he would just appear there still whenever it rained and just be standing isolated on this island for onlookers from afar. Once we give Shane the pendant, we have three days before the wedding, and you already know how we're going to spend it. That's right, sleeping. Something worth mentioning is that because we're playing on version 1.4, there's a bug in the game that can potentially ruin a marriage run at the last possible moment. If you're spam clicking during the final night before marriage, then the game will crash. This has caused Habu to lose two separate world record pace runs literally at the finish line. The first time was because he was just spamming out of eagerness, but the second time he was more testing it to see if that's what actually caused the crash. The bug was patched out in version 1.5 of the game though, so if you choose to do runs on that patch, you don't have to worry about it. Once we sleep three times, then the wedding begins. The crowd is full of villagers, all of whom know Shane, and only three know us. To the rest of the crowd, we're that weird recluse on the side of town who spent all summer growing a huge patch of peppers. The run officially ends on the camera flash after we kiss. There's something fun that Habu shows off after the run real quick. So after you give a villager the bouquet, they decay at 10 points a day. After we got engaged to Shane with the pendant, we slept for 3 straight days, meaning that we decayed our friendship points by 30 right before the wedding. This puts us at 2,475 points on the day of our wedding, meaning that when we try to kiss Shane afterwards, he rejects us. Talk about him putting on a show for the camera. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much on behalf of both myself and Habu. Stardew Valley speedruns are fascinating and just overall super cool to watch and keep up with. If you're interested in seeing what other runs there are for the game, then head on over to speedrun.com and use that search bar. I'd also like to take a moment and say thank you to Habu for his help with making this video. It would not have been possible without him. He sat down with me and walked me through the run, the reasoning and logic behind it all, and answered what seems like a million of my dumb questions. Habu streams regularly over on Twitch with the username TheHabu, you can find links to that in the description along with his YouTube and Twitter. Oh man, there's still a lot left in this outro still. This video would not have happened without the support from my patrons. Seriously, thank you all who choose to support the channel. It means so much more than you know. We recently crossed the 150 patron threshold, which held the goal of me putting up a list of around a dozen potential speedruns to cover in a speedrun explained, and all the patrons got to vote on which runs they'd like to see covered. We're planning something similar in the future for crossing 200, should we ever hit that milestone. Instead of me selecting the games and speedruns that will be on the poll though, I'm going to have the patrons pick runs that will be included in the poll, with the winner being chosen to be covered in a future video. 
If that sounds interesting to you and would like to take part, or want to have access to videos early, or the occasional Q&A stream, or want occasional updates to videos as they're being made, or even just want to support the channel monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 a month. There's a link in the description if you're interested, and as always, it's by no means necessary, but thank you to all of you who choose to do it anyways. At the beginning of the video, I also teased a new addition to the Tomato Anus team. If you've been following me on Twitter, you're likely already well aware of who this is. And by who, I don't mean this guy. That's me. I mean this little guy. Meet Duncan. Duncan is a mini Bernie Doodle and should grow to be anywhere from 15 to 25 pounds, but he's a little guy for his age, so probably closer to 15. He's an absolute terror at times, I'll typically call him Duncan the Dread, but he's really good at writing these scripts so he's essential to the team. He typically prioritizes playing over working though, so for the most part these will still be written by me. I just figured I'd formally introduce him to the channel because he may be occasionally appearing in future videos. Okay, that should be all. This was easily the longest outro I've ever done, but there was lots to cover. Oh wait, join our Discord server. The people there are so friendly and supportive of each other, it's a great place to hang out. I myself have never been one to send many messages on Discord, but you can bet your bottom that I read every message sent in there, and let me just say, there are some lovely people there. That's all for this video though. This was a glitchless speedrun to get married in Stardew Valley, I've been Tomato Anus, and I hope you have an above average day.